Welcome to the Wilson Wealth Show, a thought-provoking show about building wealth in the new economy. Each week, members of the Wilson Wealth team and their guests will discuss how to navigate the world of personal finance, stocks, real estate, and entrepreneurship to help you build wealth in the new economy. And now, here is your host, Sierra Makash. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Wilson Wealth Show. My name is Sierra Makash, and today I have Miss Ablavi with me. How are you doing today, Ablavi? I am doing well, Sierra. How are you? I'm doing great. And today on Women and Money, we're going to be talking about should I wait to have a child? Um, this is a bit of a polarizing subject. I know a lot of women um, are waiting till they're older to have children for whatever reason. A lot of people are waiting because they're taking longer to get out of college. You know, it's taking longer to get settled down or you're focusing on your career. It's become very, very common for women to have children older. Um, and we're here just to talk about that. So Blavi, would you like to start us off? Yeah, well, this is definitely a subject that I can, um, you know, share some personal experience with. Of course, I am currently pregnant, expecting my first child at 38. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it's a boy. So we're super excited, my husband and I. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's interesting because I always knew I wanted to have children. It just was not top of mind for me. So if I could give anybody advice, I would say, you know, keep it top of mind because it's easy to go through life and just throw it at the back burner and then, you know, realize when I'm 56, my child is going to be 18, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and things like that. So I think about stuff like that and it's like, where is the time gone? And um, obviously, I'm okay with that number because I'm about to pop out a baby, right? But <laughs> if, you're not, if you're not okay with that number, and I think that it's just really subjective, I don't think that anybody, and Sierra, you tell me what you think, I don't think it's fair for anyone to say that, you know, after a certain age, you shouldn't have a child because who are you to tell somebody, you know, when they can and cannot have a child? you know, that's their decision. So I feel like it wasn't uncommon for, you know, my younger cousins and stuff like that to look at me like, gosh, you don't have any kids yet. You're going to be old and all this, they, all this stuff. And in some cases they perceive me as old now having a child, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but for me, it's about what made sense and um, what I was comfortable with. And this, this is the age that I feel like, okay, yeah, I'm ready for that now. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I agree completely with you. It is nobody's business when you decide to have a child. <laughs> as long as you're following your own life plan and you're ready for it, you do whatever you want, you know? <laughs> definitely. Definitely. So, so, yeah, so I think it's all relative, but I do feel like, you know, if it is something that you want you do need to prioritize it like you would where you go to college, what type of career you have, who you're dating, and things like that, just because um, it's helpful to plan and have a sense of awareness around children. It's one thing to mm -hmm. say, oh, I want six kids. It's another thing to evaluate how much six children will cost. Oh, yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, it's one of those things where um, I feel like children having kids it does kind of get put on the back burner um you think that it's just going to come naturally it's just going to come with time you know we'll get there when we get there um i don't believe there's going to be a perfect time for a child <laughs> to enter your life um i don't think that you'll ever be really fully ready for it um but you can certainly make strides to be as ready as possible um it should be treated as one of the biggest financial life decisions that you'll ever make you know right. um, think about how much thought you would put into going to the right college or ch picking your career or researching to pick out your perfect dream home. Um, you should put three times as much effort into planning for children, you know. <laughs> and Definitely. I think that uh, a lot of people don't really realize that because it's, it's, it's a bit romanticized, of course. Of course. 
Yeah, and you don't really see all of the, you know, icky parts, which is it's very expensive. It can be really yeah. hard and it takes a lot more planning than you think it does. Exactly, exactly, definitely. And just beyond the financial piece of it, there is a huge life impact that happens as well because it's no longer just about you and your partner or your spouse. You have this life that is depending on you a hundred percent of the time. And um, you have to, I would think that you want to be the best you can in that situation. Yeah. You know? so, so, you know, you just really want to make sure that you're in the right headspace for that. I mean, just simply going out to the, um, going out to the grocery store, just going out, just to a restaurant, it's just a whole nother dynamic once you have a child and you have to be okay with that. Yeah, I definitely, I would do your research, talk to people in your life who do have children, um, talk to people who will be really honest with you about what it's really like and will talk to you about the parts that really aren't so great, you know? And also, I would plan the best you can according to your own body as well. You know, um, unfortunately, fertility issues are pretty common in women. Um, it's unfortunately a little bit on the rise as well. But um, that doesn't mean that there's, you know, no hope because there are plenty of ways to have children nowadays um, with a little bit of help with science, which is nice. Um, you know, we've got in vitro, we've got a, a ton of other ways that we can, you know, have children, surrogates even. Um, so there's that whole stigma of, you know, like you were talking about before, you know, how old is too old to have children? And with all these scientific advancements and with people living longer and with two income households being the norm, um, I'd like to say that there really isn't an age where you should stop if your body says that you can have a baby and with a little bit of scientific help, if it's successful, then you can have a baby, <laughs> in my own opinion. It's yeah. your own business. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I'm of the notion that kids keep you young. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, just e evaluate your own situation and then proceed accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, but also going back to, you know, really figuring out what your priorities are when you're younger, it would be great, you know, as women, if we took that initiative to get fertility tests. Mm -hmm. You know, even if we're not at a point where we're ready to have a child, just for your own FYI, you know, maybe you decide to freeze your eggs or something. Yeah. So you'll know, you know, what's going on and that'll help give you some framework about decision making and that kind of thing. So I, I just emphasize planning ahead and keeping it as a priority as you matriculate through life. Yes, I completely agree. I mean, think about it this way. We get, as women, you know, if you're over 21, you get pap smears uh, yearly. You get STD testing. Um, we do a lot of stuff to protect ourselves, but you never really think of testing your fertility, even if you know you want to have children in the future. It's not something that's really common among, like, young unmarried women but you know i'm 25 years old um i'm not married and i don't plan on having children anytime soon but i have been seriously considering getting a fertility test because i know that i want children in the future and i want to know where i stand how much help i'm going to need and if i should make a baby fund if i'm going to need a lot more help than the average woman you know <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. And it's, it's never too early. I feel like if you're part of the corporate environment or non-corporate, however you make your living, to see what kind of benefits your company might have with regards to those types of treatments and be able to utilize them accordingly. So definitely, that's why the planning piece is so key. And I don't think you can ever plan too early because some, some, um, fertility issues, the, the earlier you know, well, I think with anything, you know, the earlier you know, the better, right? Absolutely. Helpful. 
I mean, th that can be applied to absolutely anything. You know, mm -hmm. the earlier you know, the absolute better. And that's why we get all of these tests done, right? So why not add in a fertility test? Why not just know for your future, you know? Very I mean, definitely. say you don't want to have children and you're extremely fertile, then you can take extra care to make sure that that doesn't happen with whatever method you care to, you know? Right. So yeah. I think it's just incredibly important to know, and it's just not something that's really common. You know, I never even really heard of a fertility test until recently because I was talking to my gynecologist okay. about it, um, you know, because it's not something that's really offered to unmarried women. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Um, oftentimes it's not discussed until there's some kind of issue. And then I also just want to say that in some instances, it might be your partner that might have some type of fertility issue. So I definitely feel like this needs to be something that's discussed before you commit your life to somebody. I completely I agree. Up. I completely agree because you never know. I mean, what if having children, um, whichever way you want to have children, is something that is absolutely vital to your life, to your relationship, and, you know, your partner is not able? You know, that's something that really should be discussed before, you know, you, you decide to spend the rest of your life with them. Not that that would really um, affect everything you know of course if it's meant to be it's meant to be you can figure it out there are plenty of things you can do i mean i've had these discussions with my boyfriend um, of you know what happens if we can't have kids or something like that you know we have these conversations and it's one of those things where you really do need to be on the same page you know because we both agreed like oh well there's tons of methods it doesn't really matter we just want to be together you got to make sure that your partner feels that way and you know maybe you don't feel that way you just got to make sure you're on the same page and also make sure you both want to have children or don't want to have children <laughs> please have that conversation beforehand <laughs> definitely and then go a step further and make sure the numbers are the same or close enough to where compromises can be made oh yeah you know As that's well. something that people don't really think about either because right. i know i have a friend of mine who whose mom really wanted to have another kid and the dad wasn't really feeling it. And it had like caused problems. Luckily, you know, they were able to work it out, but it's something you don't really think to discuss. Like I've never really thought to discuss the number of children I want, but it's very important. <laughs> some people want a lot. Some people want maybe one or two. Exactly. Exactly. So planning is definitely critical. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, um, I mean, that's pretty much what we wanted to talk about today, just like throw out a little PSA with our own personal experiences <laughs> and let you guys all know that if you want children, please, please, please plan for it because there are so many things that life can throw at you that you do not expect. Absolutely. Definitely. Well, thank you all so much for listening. My name is Sierra and I have a blobby here with me and this was Women and Money. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone, for listening to today's podcast. Please visit us at www.wilsonwealth.com, on Instagram and Twitter at Wilson Wealth, and on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash Wilson Wealth for more information about us and the company. We'll see you guys next week on the Wilson Wealth Show. Thank you for listening to the Wilson Wealth Show a thought-provoking show about building wealth in the new economy. Each week, members of the Wilson Wealth team and their guests will discuss how to navigate the world of stocks, real estate, and entrepreneurship to help you build wealth in the new economy. Please join us next time on the Wilson Wealth Show.